Bear with me for just one sec while I get this ready. Share. Sorry. So good afternoon, class. My name is Lionel Sanchez. Um, I chose my photography project on Edward Weston. Um, and let's get into it. So before I get into it, I would like to uh, have a quick intro, kind of his bio, and we'll get into his death. But most importantly, he's considered one of the most influential. Um, and his style of photography is surrealism, which is like a crisp, crisp style of illusion of a three dimensionality. Right, so okay, Edward Weston was originally from Illinois. Um, he began photography at the young age of 16, I believe. And this was after he received a bullseye number two camera from his father. As he grew, he later went, uh, moved to California. After he moved to California, he considered a job uh, as a surveyor for San, for San Pedro and Los Angeles. Uh, he then began working as an itinerant photographer. Um, after that, he worked his way up. Uh, he, I remember once I read that he, once he moved there, he would go to his neighbors and uh, asked if he could photograph, photogra like take pictures of his, their children, pets, um, anything of, of their liking. And eventually he moved up to funerals. Um, after that, he realized he wanted to consider this profession and he wanted to improve his work. So after that, he, uh, in 1908, Wesson returned east and went back to Illinois, back to where he was and attended the College of Photography in Effingham, Illinois. Um, after that, he graduated in a six month period, which was like a 12 month course. So he took extra classes. He really wanted this uh, opportunity. So after that, after graduation, he went back to California. Uh, he married his first wife, Flora Chandler in 1909. Um, he eventually had four children with Flora. Um, and after that, in 1911, he, uh, after creating his family, he had his own portrait studio. Uh, back in California. Uh, this is where he based most of his work and his uh, operations. So, um, he died very early um, due to a Parkinson's disease, but as his time was coming, he would eventually work to his grand piece, I would consider, which was a portfolio which if we click here, it will take us to a portfolio where I can show you guys right here. So you can see his work throughout the years, like 1937, 1941, as early as 1924, I believe that was the earliest he had created this portfolio. And the latest, I believe was like 1940s. That's correct. All righty. Um, and this is just some of his work from the portfolio. This one's my favorite, uh, the cabbage leaf. Um, this is another one, uh, he called it pepper, like a bell pepper. And then this one's shell. Uh, he actually based his work uh, pretty early, um, close to us, uh, could be uh, Carmel Valley, I believe. So this is one of my favorites, they're just portraits. Um, this is a portrait of Manuel Hernandez Galvan. Uh, it's like a medium-sized black and white photography of a Mexican general and senator taken uh, by Edward Weston. Um, the photography shows uh, the left side of Galvan's face and neck, which is filled most of the frame and set against a plain pale background, like a white background. <clears throat> The close-up of the nature of the composition and the sharp focus of the face and its expression lend the image of psychology intensity. Um, I really like this photography. I've, I've always liked like self-portraits. 
Um, I know I like to take a lot of selfies and check myself out, not in a conceited way, but yeah. Uh, this was uh, taken in Mexico uh, during Weston's adventures down there. Um, This was inspired from the formation and subsequently joined the photography collective, right? Um, this is kind of this kind of bears a similarity to the pure style and through the deep, like the deep colors and like the dark tone between light and dark tones. Uh, the high level of detail and the way in which it represents the form of Galvin's head in isolation against the plain background. And then this is another iconic piece of art from him, which uh, most people recognize, which is uh, basically a shell, uh, hence the name shells. Um, this is uh, medium sized black and white photography, much as the Manuel Galvan's um, photo. And this was taken in 1927. Uh, this is a combined shells that are set against a plain and dark background and their pale tones mean that they shine brightly against it, right? So you wanna have like uh, the light shining against this shell with against the black um, background. Uh, the curves appear to blend into an, one abstract form, although the top of the composition, uh, the shell curves forward, giving the overall shape a seahorse-like organic quality. Uh, the bottom of the form is also curved and the surface which it res resets is slightly convex, which the shell shape appears precautiously and balanced, right? So you can see here, it looks almost balanced, although it took him a lot of time to get it there. <clears throat> After that, Weston took his photography in the studio in Glendale, California. As you can see, he based most of his work in California near like um, the ocean and water close to Mexico. Uh, it's where he found most inspiration, according to him. All right. And then this is considered to be an example of the pure and straight style that characterized Weston's style in life talk in his photographs. So this is a, the main style he would aim to go for in his, all his work. Uh, these terms first emerged in the 1980s to refer to photogenic and approach to the press high contrast, sharp focus and emphasis on the formal qualities. Um, this is basically in which subjects were photographically manipulated through the soft focus and cropping and compositional image techniques. And then we get to the death of Edward Weston. Um, yeah, he was taken from us pretty early on in his career. Um, I believe he was, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 1946 and in 1948 shot his last photography of Point Lobos, which again is close to Carmel, the Carmel Valley. Um, in 1946, the Mo Museum of Modern Arts in New York featured a major re retrospective of 300 Prince of Western's work. So if you go to New York, um, in the Museum of Modern Art, they have a lot of pieces of Edward Weston due to his, um, to him being considered one of the most influential photographers. Um, and over the next 10 years, um, his illness increased. Um, and as he went on to pass away, he created his last work, which was the portfolio. Um, after that, Edward Weston died on January 1st in 1958 at his house in Wildcat Hill in Carmel, California. Uh, his ashes were scattered into the Pacific Ocean at Pebbly Beach at Point Lobos. And that is the life of Edward Weston and his work and his style. Thank you.